Mr. Speaker, let us stipulate and establish that the economy is bad. I don't think there's anybody here who will say otherwise. But in doing that, Mr. Speaker, it is important for us to understand that this recession does not know color, does not know party, does not know tribe, and neither does it know religion. And it's from that premise, it only knows you as a Nigerian. And it is from that premise we need to approach this debate. I would not want a situation where we would debate something so important that affects every single person we represent and debate it from the position of party or tribe or religion. It is important, Mr. Speaker, that our criticisms must be constructive and we must proffer solutions. For me, it is important for us, of all, first of all, to ask ourselves the question, what is the causation of this recession? We cannot jump the gun and begin to address issues when we don't know what, this is, what the causation is. You have to know the causation for you to find solutions. I have heard a lot of talk about the CBN, and I totally agree with a lot of these things that have been said. But let us understand one thing. The CBN is an independent body. It is an independent, autonomous body. And most of the personnel was, was, was inherited by the president. Mr. Speaker, the issue we are facing today, take for instance the issue of foreign exchange. Let us break it down to the layman. Let us forget the issue of economic terms that some of us don't even understand. It's a simple issue, Economics 101, supply and demand. Supply and demand. Nigeria as a country earns money, makes its income principally 80% from oil. At the time when this government inherited the economy, oil was saying that I have $120 a barrel. And then there was a sharp decline. And I use the word advisedly sharp. Not just a decline, but a very sharp decline to about $30. In other words, the Nigeria was not making any money. But the demand for foreign exchange remained the same. So it does not take you to be a rocket, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that certain things would have to give. And that is what is happening today. We must look at globally at all the oil producing countries in the world. Nigeria is not isolated in what is happening today. You want to go back to Venezuela, look at Saudi Arabia, look at Russia, look at all the oil producing countries in the world. The same thing is happening. So what do we, what do we, what do we need to do? For me, Mr. Speaker, I have heard a lot, lot and I heard Honorable Nana talk about economic blueprint, policy direction. It has become very fashionable to ask and talk about economic blueprint, and I don't disagree. But Mr. Speaker, it is very clear to even the most discerning mind that an economic blueprint or policy direction of any government is found in only one document, or principally in one document, and that is the budget. If you are looking for the economic blueprint of Nigeria, or if you are looking for the economic blueprint of any country, you pick up its budget. Therein you will find its economic blueprint. You will find where it has allocated money. You will find its priority areas for spending. You will find the issue of diversification of the economy right in there. It now behoves us as a, as a national assembly. You now behoves us as a national assembly to follow through and follow that money and do our work the way it's supposed to be done. Government is not about the executive. Government is about everybody, including Nigerians, elected and unelected. Because if you're talking about a democracy, government for the people, by the people, and of the people, then that government includes the people at the, at the grassroots. 
Mr. Speaker, it is very important that we look objectively at this, on this, at these issues. Nigerians are known for one thing: we are known for our grit, our tenacity, and our can-do spirit. And we need to tap into that spirit right now that we're going through issues like never before. What are the solutions that we need to prefer? Mr. Speaker, it is clear that we need to do something about the interest rate. For us to be able to stimulate our economy, we need to pump money, we need to give, broaden the capacity for people to be able to bo borrow money from banks, particularly small-scale industries. But in doing that, in doing that, we have to come out with a creative way to lower the interest rate, the NPR. We need to start thinking outside the box. That is number one. Number two, it doesn't make sense for us to complain that the country is not making money and there's a, there's a recession. We need to address the issue of bombings and the Avengers. Because no matter what the economic policy you bring, for as long as you continue to, to make money from one source, and people continue to bomb your pipelines, for you to make money, you have to be able to produce. The two go hand in hand. If you're not producing, you cannot make money. So we need to address these issues right from where they, where they, they start. We need to, whether it's by negotiation, or otherwise, or strong arm, we need to address the issue of pine bombing, uh, pipeline bombing. Mr. Speaker, the issue of employment is also an issue that we need to address. This House has debated and we've talked about giving employment to our, to our citizens and giving them the first right of refusal and stopping the influx of foreigners to come and do jobs that Nigerians can readily and easily do and are available to do. Mr. Speaker, our colleague raised the issue of PIB. It is very important that we give this special attention and speedy passage. It is important, Mr. Speaker, I talked about the oversight functions. In oversighting, we will make sure that the economy is actually even being diversified and money is pumped into or is being utilized for what it was budgeted for. Mr. Speaker, I think it's also important to, to address one thing. You cannot talk about the economy without talking about what this government, the drive of this government to stem the tide of corruption. You cannot separate the progress of our economy from the issue of corruption. And I'll tell you why. Simple. Mr. Speaker, when monies are stolen, or money is supposed to go to, it affects corruption, affects every sector. You have corruption in the health industry. You have corruption in the transport sector. You have corruption in the power sector. You have corruption in the education sector. How then can you grow your economy if all the sectors, all the areas of your economy are enmeshed in corruption? That is why this corruption fight actually has a very strong tie with the progress, economic progress of any country. We cannot wish it away. Somebody talked about Obama or America and how they came out of recession. America inherited a recessed economy. Mr. Speaker, contrary to what Honorable Nena said, it took Obama six years, seven years. In fact, as a matter of fact, this is his eighth year, and the American economy is only, only just beginning to revive itself or jumpstart itself. It was, not a, it was not done in a year. It was not done in two years. It was not done in three years. Mr. Speaker, as my role as the mover of government business in this house, it is true that it would be difficult for me perhaps to be as objective as I would be. But it's also true that I must speak truth to power. But in speaking truth to power, I must also be constructive and objective about it. 
We cannot start the blame game. We cannot continue the blame game. We cannot move forward without looking behind and see where we're coming from. These are the areas, these are the issues that we need to tackle. Yes, we're in a recessed economy. But we need to come together, we need to strap our belt, we need to forget about party, and begin to profess solutions. And there is, and, and of course the National Assembly has a role to play. I make bold to say that we are not doing our oversight the way we should do it. We need to buckle up. We need to buckle up, we need to oversight the executive and do what, and, and make sure that they're doing what they brought to us that they were going to, to do in terms of the blueprint of the economy. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I think more importantly and or finally, we need to use this opportunity, very important, to restructure this government. And when I say restructure, what I mean is simple. We need to really set a structure where we have a true federal republic of Nigeria. We need to reduce this, this, the structure right now is top heavy. We need to reduce the responsibilities of federal government and begin to devolve those things to the states and allow the states to internally generate revenue to be able to take care of those things. For as long, for as, long as the federal government is controlling 80% of the responsibilities of government, no matter how much money you make, no matter how much money you make, the federal government will be overburdened. So this is a time that calls for restructuring. Restructuring has a lot to do with not just political, but also with economic progress. And these are the areas that I think we need to look at as a, as a National Assembly. And I, need, I think we need to tighten our belt, sit down, and work out exactly when we need to go from here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, honorable colleagues for giving me the time to address this very important issue.